Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashlyn and in this video I'm going to be talking about letter learning, especially learning letters in the Montessori way, which is pretty different from a traditional style of learning. I'm also going to be talking about how we introduce letters to our son and how the process is going for us at this time. If you come from a more traditional background of learning, usually letters are introduced uppercase letters first, usually in alphabetical order, and you're taught the letter names. So your teacher might say, now here's a letter A, we're learning a little about the letter A today, and it'll usually be a capital letter, sometimes like both of them together. And learning letters in the Montessori way is pretty much opposite of everything that I just said, with the number one difference being you have to introduce lowercase letters first. This is backwards to what you might just originally think about doing with your child, but if you look into it, it does make a lot of sense. Your child will see lowercase letters far more often than uppercase letters. In any book or anything they're going to be reading, you know, uppercase letters are only at the beginning of a sentence, so most of the sentence and most of the words and letters they're reading and looking at all the time are lowercase letters. So it makes more sense to familiarize them with those ones that they're going to be seeing far more often. The next step in this process is introducing letters by their letter sounds before their letter names. So for instance, like the letter G, we would say this is G, we would say this is G. We do that for all the letters so far with Rory and that's pretty staple in all Montessori schools. The reasoning for this is that it should better prepare your child for reading and writing because it's mentally going to make more sense to them. If you see a word like bug, for instance, instead of seeing the letters that they would think if they knew the letter names like B, U, G, if they already know the letter sounds first, they're going to know it as B, UG. They'll be able to put those letter sounds together much more easily and quickly than they would have if their initial reaction was to name the letter names. Once the kids are older, they can more formally learn the letter names, or most likely they'll just pick it up on their own as you're reading or hearing other people talk about them. But as long as they learn the letter sounds first, you're setting them up to be able to read and write much more easily. Next, make sure to introduce the letter sounds with the sound that is most commonly represented by that letter. So the letter C can be pronounced k, like cat, or s, like cell phone, but you're going to want to introduce k because most often that's how C is pronounced. Same with a lot of other letters. Most of the letters in the English language can be used for different sounds, which is really confusing. I don't even know how kids pick up on this so quickly because it's confusing to, if you really think about it, how English language like changes. It doesn't really have a lot of rules, but anyways, as long as you're introducing the letter sounds as like their most common sound, that's setting your child up for the most success and then they can you know, learn more of the intricacies of the letter again when they get a little bit older. Step four is to start with short vowel sounds rather than long vowel sounds. This is going to help your child be able to read three letter words, which is what they're going to be starting with. So for instance, like sit has a short vowel I sound and say has a long vowel A sound, even though they're both simple three letter words. We just wanna keep it as simple as possible and make as much sense as possible to new letter learners and not overwhelm them right away with different rules. So make sure to stick with short vowel sounds. We want all the letters that they're looking at, that they're saying, and that they're reading to be phonetic and to follow all of the rules that we're teaching them as far as what letters make what sounds. Number five is that there is no need to introduce the alphabet in alphabetical order. It's not going to benefit your child in any way and can in fact hinder their letter learning process. In traditional learning, we learn in alphabetical order. So we'll learn like A, B, C first. They can't do a lot with those letters and it doesn't play to their individual interest. I was looking online a lot and I couldn't find anything like cemented that was the correct order to introduce letters. A lot of different Montessori schools have different ones that they start with, but just keep in mind that there's no reason to make them in alphabetical order. You can start with letters your child might be saying the most, start with the letters they're hearing the most, maybe the first letter in their name or things that they'd like to say, especially letter sounds that you know they can say. Your child will need to know the alphabetical order at some point, because a lot of things are organized that way and it's just something that everyone kind of needs to know. But it's not something we need to know right when we're teaching them the letters. This is, again, something they can pick up along the way or we can introduce like the ABC song when they get a little older. Most kids pick up that song pretty quickly, so it's not going to be like an issue if you don't teach it right away. And number six is to make sure and use manipulatives and sensory items instead of just showing your child the letter on paper. In the Montessori approach, it is very commonly known to engage all of your child's senses at the same time. 
to keep them more interested, to help them learn better, and to just trigger their brain in more ways than one. This will look like using wooden alphabet pieces, tracing letters on paper, writing letters out of play-doh and molding, using their hands like to get dirty, you know, tracing letters in paint, just changing it up a little bit so they're not just doing the same thing on paper, making it more fun, and again, engaging all of their senses to help them cement the information. So that is kind of the basics of letter learning in the Montessori method. This is commonly a skill taught in the three to six classroom, which is a sensitive period for learning letters and language development in that way. But as a Montessori at home setting, we can kind of just change it up as we wish. And I'm going to be talking about how we taught my son his letters as young as like 14 months is when we started teaching him. This is definitely not something that needs to be taught at this young age, but we were following my son's interest which all started last Christmas when we, he got this letter puzzle. Not all the letters are in here, I'll explain why later. So he was 14 months old when we got this for him, which is pretty young. I thought we could just store it or use it as decoration or something until he was ready, but just wanted to have it on hand until you know, we saw that he was interested. But right away, he would pick up the letters. He loved just examining them and holding them, and we just started teaching him the letter sounds as soon as he got it. This started as him just like bringing us each letter over and over again and we'd make the letter sound and hold it the appropriate way for him. When I saw that this interest wasn't something that was going to be going away anytime soon, I realized that this is way too many letters for him to be having access to at one time. It's pretty overwhelming and I didn't see a way for him to learn and master them with them all being available to him. So I put this whole puzzle tray away and I brought out M, S, A, T. Those are the four that I started with. And again, I didn't start alphabetically. I picked sounds my son could say. Because he was only 14 months old, he couldn't, and he still can't pronounce and articulate some of these sounds. So I wanted to pick ones that I knew he could say, and that I've heard him say a lot of times, and that he likes to say. So a lot of words that he said started with those letters that I mentioned, and that's why I picked those ones. I didn't do much beyond that. I just had four letters and a little basket. I put it on his toy shelf with his normal toys, and he would just, go to the bucket, you know, pull them out. We talk about the sounds, talk about what words started with the sounds, and he was pretty engaged. That led the way to adding a few letters every week or every other week, depending on his interest. He kind of lapsed in interest for a little while and has since picked up. So now we're at the point where we have this basket with 15 letters. Where do you have? It's fine. Right there. This one is s. Can you find s? Yes. The remainder of the letters are kind of difficult for him to say, but I'll still introduce them slowly, and even if he hears us say them, he doesn't necessarily have to articulate them perfectly. But this is something that has been a staple on our shelf for months now. Now that my son is 20 months old, he still has this basket, and we still refer to them many, many times every single day. We have since paired his letters with this Montessori letter workbook. This follows very much with what we have been teaching him so far. Again, not in alphabetical order. This book actually groups the letters by like the way that you write them. So similar like motions with your hand, which is interesting. And they also have like a little bit of texture, kind of like sandpaper letters for them to trace. And it goes through all of the letters and has a very simple picture, something that starts with the actual sound. Yes, very good. What else do we have? What else? Yeah, where's that one? Is that here? For ant? Again, this has quickly become a favorite. We read this book and get the letters. It's like the first thing he comes to in the morning and many times throughout the day. Grabs the basket, grabs the book, and wants to come over and go through them with us. So it is child-led. I'm not forcing him to learn his letters now. If he wasn't interested, it's not something I would even introduce at all at this point. But because he is so interested, that's why we're doing this whole process right now. I'm just starting to show him like by tracing. Now when I read the book, I'll say, you know, this is duh, and I'll trace it with my finger the right way that it's supposed to go so he can start understanding that's how you would write it, even if it's not him writing it. He's pretty far from being able to write on his own. This puzzle is still put away with these letters. These are the ones he doesn't know yet because the puzzle is pretty difficult and I don't want to confuse him or make it harder than it needs to be. So this is still in storage with the letters that we haven't learned yet. Another one of our favorites to pair with those is this little writing tablet. 
we weren't intending to use this for letters so we were given it as a gift and instantly he just asked us to write the letters so he'll bring this to us and say i want i want i want and we'll write the letters for him or we'll i'll write a bunch for him and he'll point them out so he really likes using this writing thing like this you push this button to erase it but it's a pretty cheap little thing for them sometimes we'll draw on it but most of the time honestly we just use it for letters um, you up I'm, 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 what about I'm, this one what's that what is, what's this one this is again something that's always on his shelf and hasn't been rotated out since we got it and we paired it with all the other letter learning materials probably about a month ago he started identifying letters like in the actual world not in our home setting or when i'm trying to introduce them but just at books on the side of cars or trucks big billboard signs he'll point to them and tell us what letters he sees that's a new development we're also just starting to pair together three letter words he's a little bit far cognitively from quite grasping that concept but I will write three letter words that he knows the word, what it means, and that he knows all the letters of, and that he can say on his little board and I'll like draw my finger across it and help him sound it out. Again, that's a little bit advanced for him right now, but I'm just trying to build upon his interest because he's mastered those 15 letters pretty quickly and just absolutely loves anything with letters. If your child is already at this stage, I'll talk about what we're going to do next Next, we're going to get a movable alphabet. You can find them on Amazon or more expensive other places. These are what you start to put together for building words, three letter words, and they can move them around. And again, just having manipulatives they can hold and maneuver really helps instead of just seeing a letter on paper. We also want to be getting sandpaper letters, real ones, kind of like the ones that are in the book, but they make tiles with sandpaper letters written on them. And I think that would help Rory be able to trace it with his finger and have that sensory input and be able to kind of, again, just have more opportunities for letter learning, letter matching, and we can start to spell with those big letter tiles as well. So that is where we are at this point. Again, my son is 20 months old. He just turned 20 months and it's been an interest for months and months. And especially lately in the last month has been his most interest that he's had so far. And he talks about them all the time and he'll bypass all of his toys to run to the letters anytime. I know he's not too advanced yet as far as like the reading and writing because he's so young, but I thought I'd just make this video to show our beginning stages of this process and I can make another one when he learns a little bit more and see how that goes and if the materials I mentioned before if we end up purchasing, like how those end up helping us. And remember, if you're teaching your child the Montessori method, letter learning, focus on doing lowercase letters first, letter sounds first, doing short vowels, and sounds that are most commonly heard. That's pretty much all like the bullet points for this whole video as far as teaching your child the letters. And again, most importantly, follow their lead and the letters they want to learn and if they even want to learn them at this age or however old they are. But thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this video, make sure to like it. You can go to my channel and subscribe to check out my other videos and see Rory doing more of his letters in action in our weekly vlogs and as well as other more sit down structured Montessori style videos like this. But I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.